Hi everyone, I'm Tim Cash. This is the IMDb Show. Give it up for my guest today, Lizzie Kaplan. I really appreciate that raucous applause. When you first find out that you're playing Annie Wilkes on Castle Rock, where do you start? Well, when it was first brought to my attention, it was real terror. I don't generally play big characters. Uh -huh. And this was like a full-blown, big swing character. And I knew because it scared me so much, I absolutely had to do it. When the person who loves you most in this filthy world asks you to trust them, then you listen to that person, Joy. It's a role that won Kathy Bates an Academy Award. What do you do in this situation? Because you want to make it your own, but I guess you also want to pay tribute. For me, growing up with this movie, Kathy Bates is Annie Wilkes. I mean, that performance is so next level. It's like hero status. She created this character. Who did? Obviously Stephen King did, but in Misery the Book, she seems much more just straight villainous. Kathy Bates brought all of this stuff to the character. To me, that is Annie Wilkes, and I'm just kind of like, borrowing her for a little bit and then giving it back to the queen of Annie Wilkes, Kathy Bates. Please, help me help you. What are you taking away from that when you're watching? I was looking for how she moved. I was looking for weirdly like eye contact stuff, like how often does she look away? How often does she fix him? And how she made that scary. It's so much scarier to me how gentle she is when she's nursing him. Right. So all of those things were super helpful. And I wasn't necessarily trying to pull any specific thing. I just wanted maybe the 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 kernel of the essence of the <laughs> gist of yeah. who of what Annie this is. person yeah. is. Yeah. I try so hard to be my best self and not the other one. Um, are you an actor that stays in character? Because that would be extremely strange for everybody yeah. on set with you. No, I'm really not. <laughs> and how does that, I always wonder how does that like meld with people that do want to stay in character? I mean, listen, like I think- Like all of Daniel Day-Lewis's co-stars in history. I know, I Like, he's a bit weird. I drink your milkshake. Daniel Day-Lewis is probably the most extreme, but I think whatever you need to do to mean it between action and cut, whatever you need to do. I don't need to be Annie Wilkes uh, on my lunch break. She's got nothing to do with this. So what's the switch for you? Can you just do it like that? Wardrobe does help. Okay. Masters of Sex probably opened my eyes to that the most because I would wear these 1950s yeah. undergarments. Right. Long line bras, like you're clipping your style, and that helped. And that comes with the job. And then for Annie, <laughs> I try. I think undergarments weirdly do yeah, help what me. What undergarments does I Annie mean, Wilkes wear? Big <laughs> underwear, <laughs> like Real grandma's deal. cotton underwear. <laughs> I don't know what you're insinuating. Not insinuating. I'm telling. There's another show that you're on. Truth be told. Yes. You're part of the new Apple TV Plus family. I am. Any perks, by the way, being part of the Apple TV? Yes, Plus well, family. I will say when I first walked into my trailer on day one of shooting, I was expecting like a genius bar and just people there waiting like, what would you like? <laughs> you can have this, you can have this. And there was nothing. Not even an iPad. Not even an iPad. I complained about it loudly into the camera every day, sort of jokingly, but sort of not. And since then, things have sort of materialized. Not asking for anything else. Boundaries. In this show, you're playing twins. Yeah. That must have been attractive yet challenging. It was both of those things. Okay, so what do you do? How do you do that? It was a bit of trial and error, okay. but I had two very talented actresses that were my doubles. And Got it. so one was the brunette and one was the blonde. So if I was gonna be the brunette first, then the, st the blonde stand-in, I'd say, I think I'm gonna do it like this when I'm blonde, but just kind of speed this part up and slow this part down. And then I would switch over and hopefully my brunette stand-in would have been watching everything I was doing so she could kind of em emulate that while I was doing the other side. It was really complicated. It's double the work and double the time. Double the pay? I, by the way, start Not this campaign. Not double the pay. If you're reading two people's lines and playing two different people's characters, you should be getting double the pay. I completely agree. I had to A go through hair makeup percent. twice. I mean, it's cute that you believe that. What was it about the show that made you say yes? I really wanted to work with Octavia Spencer. I know that feeling well. Everybody I know who has worked with her just couldn't say nice enough stuff about her. I'd literally throw you a question being like, is it true how nice she is? But I already know this answer it's because people tell me true. every single time. It's crazy. She's like Tom Hanks level loved. We can agree on that, then cool. 
So all of that was just the warm up. This is actually the most revealing part of the interview and it is your watch list. I guess that's why they put it on internet dating profiles because it's very telling. Do they? I don't know. Like what you're watching? I, yeah, I'm sure they, they must, do. I'm right? sure they do, yeah. What are you watching? Barry. I love that show. They're the real deal and they say I got something. I have some friends on that show, full disclosure. Hada? No. Anthony Kerrigan, who okay. plays NoHo Hank, uh -huh. who's like the greatest ever. It's Hank. I know it's Hank. You know Hank. I know you're in a wig. This hurts mine though. Uh, oh, that makes me feel gross. N name dropping. I don't know I Bill Hader. I, I'd rather you did though. All right, go on, another show. Have you seen Watchmen yet? Yeah, of course. Okay, Watchmen's fantastic. That much is indisputable. I love Damon Lindelof. I just love the way he tells stories. I just trust him. As a viewer, I sit there and I'm like, I don't need to worry about anything. Damon's gonna, gonna take us through yeah, and it's course. gonna make perfect sense and it's gonna be super deep. That is correct. Have you seen the show Encore? I have not. Tell me about Encore. I think it's the best show on TV. I really wanna see it. Each week, they go to a high school for example, episode one, a high school somewhere put on a production of Annie in 1996. So now they go and they get the cast from the high school production and they're all, you know, grown up and they have kids and life has gotten in the way and they redo Annie with the grown up cast from the high school musical. I mean, That's it's amazing. Brilliant. You guys like it? Was it fun? Lizzie Kaplan, thank you so much for coming by the show. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations pleasure. on everything. If you're not already hooked, it's not too late because you can watch Lizzie right now in Castle Rock on Hulu and Truth Be Told on Apple TV+. Plus. You can also see more interviews like this one on imdb.com slash show. But before you do any of that, here's a look at what we're all going to be watching next. It is this week's Trailer Trailer. All art. Uh, that's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's art, so it's subjective. The point of it is to make people smile. I love to compete. Just me and the dog and a table full of color. Hey, remember that one summer we died under a table? I found this in my living room. Whoa, killer replica. Is this what recreational drugs feel like? If you feel yourself losing control, I'm not gonna lose. Control. Your spirit is evident. But something holds you back. When they find out who you are, they will show you no mercy. 